experiment we are going to be looking at enzymatic inhibition and we're going to be looking at inhibition of an enzyme called catechol oxidase. This enzyme is found in a variety of places including in places like potatoes. So for example when you cut open a potato or you bite into an apple over time that apple goes brown or the potato gets brown that is the product of the activity of this enzyme. So catechol oxidase causes that browning. Okay. And so what we have here, instead of purified enzyme, is we have potato juice, which contains the enzyme that we're looking for. Okay, so we're going to be using that as a source of our enzyme. And what we have, <coughs> excuse me, is catechol, which is the substrate of this enzyme. Okay. We also have PTU, phenylthiourea, which is the inhibitor of this enzyme. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up three test tubes. So I'm going to have three test tubes that I will prepare for this. Okay. So we're going to have one test tube that gets the catechol and enzyme. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to have one test tube that is going to get the catechol and the enzyme. So, plus catechol. We're going to have one test tube that gets twice as much catechol. So, plus 2x cat. Okay. So, we're going to have two tubes that contain catechol and enzyme, but also the inhibitor. And we're going to have one test tube that does not contain inhibitor, so no PTU. <coughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to prepare these tubes the way that it's described in your table. Now you could do it another way. Uh, what you have in your table is you have distilled water, five milliliters of distilled water for all of them, and then you have a second uh, column that gives you a different amount of distilled water depending on which tube you're looking at. You could add that all together so you can make this 5.5 mils of water, 5 mils of water, and 6 mils of water. Overall what has to happen is that the total volume for each of these tubes will be the same. Okay, So because we're using different amounts of catechol and different amounts of PTU for each tube, we have to adjust the water volume so that in the end every single one of these test tubes is going to have the exact same volume. Okay, so I'm just going to directly add the amount of, of water. It's going to be either five mils or five point five or six mils. Okay, so you just open up the pipettes. <coughs> the pipette aid. And I'm going to take up for the first two. I need five point five mils of water. So I'm going to take up. Look at the small numbers on this pipette. Hopefully, you can see them. Right there is 5.5. It's going to go into the first two. Okay. The second tube is going to receive 5 milliliters. Because I'm allowing the gravity to drain this, I'm going to have to reset the plunger. And the last tube gets 6 milliliters of water. So again, up here I'm going to bring it up to 6. Now, depending on how you look at this pipette, you're going to see different numbers. So on this side here it says 4, on this side here it says 6. So what you need to understand is the numbering starts in this case from the bottom. So at the bottom you have zero milliliters, then one, then two, then three, four, five, six. Okay? On the other side, the larger numbers, the zero is at the top. Numbering starts at the top. That's why the numbers are different. So just make sure that you're using the right side of the pipette to help you figure out what volume to use. It's a very common problem for students initially when they don't know how to use these things. They don't pipette the right volumes. Okay, so there we go. That is 
six milliliters of our solution of our water. <clears throat> and I'm going to add potato extract to all of these things. That's the enzyme. Okay. So, so one milliliter pipette. So first I'm going to use a different pipette aid. So in this case here, the numbers are indicating decimal places. So this whole pipette from zero until the tip is one milliliter. Okay, so if I'm trying to get half a milliliter, that's up here. Okay, so that's 0 0.5 right there. That's how much I'm going to load into each of these tubes. So potato juice. I'm going to try not to take up too much of the solid material inside this potato juice. I'm just going to try to get the enzyme without the extra starch. Okay, so that's my 0.5 mils. So I'm going to tube number one. Tube number two. three, they all get the same amount of the enzyme. Okay. <clears throat> here. Now tubes one and two will receive the inhibitor, that's the PTU. I'm going to add that next. Now the order here does matter. Okay? The moment you add the substrate and enzyme in the same tube, the reaction should start. So if you don't want the reaction to start right away, you don't want to add both of them together first. So that's why in this case here, the substrate will be the last component to be added. This way, the moment we add the substrate, that's when the reaction actually will start. So the PTU in this case, is the inhibitor. Take half a milliliter again. So again, just bring it up to the 0 0.5 mark. Or just to one and two. Again. Now we have this whole table almost completed, we just need to add catechol. And I want you to notice that in this case here, tube 1 gets half a milliliter of catechol, tube 2 gets 1 milliliter, so we're doubling the amount of catechol. The rest of the, the components in this tube are exactly the same. Okay, So we have the same volume of potato extract, so the same amount of enzyme, same amount of sub, the inhibitor. The only difference really is, and again, ignore the water, the water is not going to affect the reaction. So you're just going to, the only difference is going to be how much catechol you're adding. So here you're putting in half a milliliter, here you're putting one milliliter, so you're doubling the amount. And because of this, it's going to allow you to figure out if you are looking at a competitive or non-competitive inhibition. Okay, so we're going to add the catechol to these, to all three tubes, and then the reaction will start. <coughs> so again, tube number one gets half a milliliter. Two will get one milliliter, so I'm going to bring this all the way up to the top here. That's one mil. And then tube three gets half a milliliter again. So it's a little bit sensitive. Here we go. It's half. Okay. So, like I said, as soon as this substrate goes in, 
the reaction begins. And so we're seeing here, let's just mix them up well. Okay, in fact, I'm going to use parafilm to help me with this. Parafilm is this really awesome stuff that is kind of like your kitchen wrap, but so much better. It sticks to a lot of things really well, especially glass, and it stretches really well. And really, to make it work well, you need to stretch it. So I'm going to take half of this because I don't need the full thing. I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to stretch it the other way as well. Now that it's stretched, it's more likely to actually stick to things. So as long as I have a dry surface here, it's going to attach very nicely to this tube. So now that it's in place, nothing makes sense. Okay, it's perfect, and so it allows me to mix things very well, very thoroughly. So I can use the other half. And again, I can stretch it either here, or I can stre stretch it directly on the tube. I can just pull my thumb over one corner and just pull across. And the trick here is just to make sure it doesn't rip as you are pulling. So again, two different ways of doing this. But the key here is that you need to stretch this stuff. It doesn't stick to things if you don't stretch it, so you have to stretch it before you use it, okay? So we have these two components, these two test tubes already done. Let's do one more. Okay. <coughs> Oops, I see this one ripped a little bit. It's probably still okay. I'm going to try it again. What I have remaining. stick just fine. Okay, so a very small amount of this goes a long way. And again, one of the things you got to start to notice is that there's a color difference already. You can see that in there? Okay. So there's already starting to be a color difference between the test tubes. And we're going to give this a little bit of time. Let's maybe give it about five minutes or so to allow the color to more fully develop. And then we'll come back and take a look at the results. results from the, uh, the experiment with the inhibitor okay. and so we have our three test tubes again we have our catechol that was just half a milliliter and we have twice the amount of catechol and we have this tube that did not get any PTU and it just has half a milliliter of catechol okay now first things first let's notice that Tube number three has a lot of color development, okay? So the question here is, what would we call this tube? And based on past experience, I can say that most of you probably would say, oh, it's a positive control um, because it did not get PTU. But yes, it is a control, but this is a very common mistake. Just because it has color in it doesn't make it a positive control, okay? Always think about what was the purpose of this experiment? Okay, the purpose of this experiment was to determine what is the activity of this PT of this inhibitor. So the tubes one and two got inhibitor. This one did not get inhibitor. Okay, so if you do not add the thing that you're testing for, that means that this is going to be a negative control. So this is actually a negative control. Okay, this is what it's going to show us when there is no PTU activity. The other two test tubes did get PTU. They did both get the inhibitor but they got different amounts of substrate. Now, if you think back to your, your lecture, you'll remember that there's a difference between um, competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition in that if you increase the amount of substrate with a competitive, competitive inhibitor, then it will outcompete your inhibitor and so you will get more product. So if PTU was competitive, then you would expect to see tube number two to give you more color. You would see, expect to see more product here. But as you can see here, there really isn't that much of a difference between these two test tubes. Okay, so again, if this was non-competitive, then increasing the amount of substrate should increase the amount of product being produced. This is not what we're seeing here. Whereas if you're using a non-competitive inhibitor, that non-competitive inhibitor acts away from the active site. It changes the shape of the enzyme and so therefore, no matter how much substrate you add, it's not going to be able to, act, to bind to the active site and the enzyme will not produce any more product. Okay? So based on these results, I will let you make your decision about what you think what kind of an inhibitor of PTU actually is.